Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another edition of Early Morning Reflection with Lawrence Billy Graham. This is the Greater Light of God Church, and we are of the Media and Communications Department. The Greater Light of God is a wonderful and powerful church here based in the United Arab Emirates, and we are all sitting under the ministration of, the, of Pastor Ekel Fields Oko. Nowadays, you will hear of a virus that is sweeping across the oceans to continents, to countries, to cities and towns. Nowadays, you often hear of new words like confinement, lockdown, stay home, stay safe. These words are mostly used in our day-to-day -day vocabulary. I am talking about COVID-19 that is ravaging the world's population today and some, even some world leaders are submitting in fear. Present with me in the studio tonight, to this morning, is Dr. Choma Okere. Dr. Choma Okere is a sound professor and expert also in medical terms. Uh, welcome on board, doctor. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. We are glad to have you, sir. And of course, we also have Mrs. Virginie, who is the director of Jeannie Deepcuts TV. She is a journalist and more fluent in French. Mrs. Virginie, welcome to the studio. Thank you. I'm happy. I joined you guys today. I'm very happy. God bless you. And of course, we have uh, our man of God, Pastor Frederick Oruka. He is the resident pastor of the Greater Light of God Church in Rasakema. Man of God, you're welcome on board. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. God bless you. And thank you all for honoring our invitation. We are greatly elated. Ladies and gentlemen, these great men and women present here in the studio tonight will be talking to us. We, it's going to be a talk show, an, an interactive talk show. We will be talking tonight on COVID-19. What is it actually, what, what is it all about? How can this be prevented? And what does the Holy Book, the Bible, say about pandemic during the time of God's people? Just stay tuned with us, listen to us, follow up what these great men and women will be saying to us this morning. So, Doctor, I begin with you. If someone meets you on the highway, someone who has been hearing about COVID-19, he really doesn't know what is it, and he wants to find out, maybe in local or in simple language, what this is all about. What have you to tell this local man? Okay, so the first thing would be that um, COVID is is a term that stands for coronavirus disease, and it's 19 because there have been several orders before it. But the common thing um, for the coronavirus is, is the fact that they affect our respiratory system. So they are referred to as SARS, S-A-R-S, severe um, acute respiratory syndrome. And the word acute there means it can be very it's a very short term. It's a, you know, once the once the connection is made, it can lead to rapid deterioration. So, COVID nineteen is very unique because it's novel, meaning that it's new. So there's no antibody for it. There's no vaccine for it yet. And so, if anyone comes in contact with COVID nineteen or coronavirus, two it's very likely that they are, they are going to have to um, have themselves checked, especially if they begin to show certain um, symptoms. So um, we mentioned that it, the, the coronavirus can cause, it can be transmitted through the air, basically as droplets or micro droplets when an individual coughs or sneezes or comes in close contact, say to kiss or to snore on you if you have a you know, sleepy partner or to just breathe over a, a person. So that can uh, lead to the transmission of uh, this disease. And so which is why uh, there's been the campaign to uh, maintain a social distance because that would hopefully take care of the drop, my, droplets and micro droplets. In addition, um, 
In addition to that, then we have the fact that we don't touch, we avoid touching our eyes, our nose, and our mouth because these three organs are anatomically connected, especially within when you get inside the, inside the upper part of the throat and the neck, in the neck region. Okay, so, doctor, what in effect mm -hmm. what you are telling the lay person is that this virus, which is killing people at random or uh, so fast, can mostly be contracted through coughing, sneezing, that's what we talk about droplets, and through touching. Exactly. Exactly. And touching could be direct or indirect. Exactly. Wonderful. Doctor, I'll be right back to you. Uh, there's a lot more that I have to ask uh, from you so that you can enlighten the entire population. Uh, let me move on to Mrs. Virginie, who is director of uh, Gini Zipcuts TV. Mrs. Virginie, we understand that you are a journalist and a sound speaker as well. Uh, what about, what is your understanding about this virus? How can this virus actually be prevented? If someone meets you in the way and asks about the various strategies through which he or, he, he or she can prevent this virus, what have you done? Okay, the first thing I will advise the person is that we have to stay as much as possible if we can home. It's very important. So um, being home, we avoid to infect ourselves or to infect other in case we have the coronavirus. And the second thing is like, I, I just had that luck that today morning the World Health Organization just sent the message for the message to everyone uh, this morning and I hope you people got it also. So the second information they gave us is that uh, you have to try to uh, maintain the social distances because um, when you know or you don't know someone, you try to avoid to come in contact with the person, you try to avoid because it's through the good light when the person sneezes or coughs that we can be infected from the virus. So we have to try to avoid um, to stand in contact with someone one meter at least in order for us uh, to avoid coronavirus. The third one is um, we have to wash our hands often. We have to wash our hands as much as possible. Please, please, parents, I'm advising that you should supervise your kids. I know what I'm saying because I'm, I'm, I was the playing type when I was very young. So when I would just go playing and come back home, when mom would say, go wash your hands, I just go behind, carry some buckets and just put my hands inside and hope I'm, I'm gone. So really, wash your hands, take your time, 20 seconds, you can sing, you can do something, but for 20 seconds, wash your hands with soap and the rest. If you don't have soap, you can use some sanitizer. I don't know if, in Africa, I don't know if we, we are used to with the sanitizers, but it's very important, Nama, I mean, it's very, very important for us to use uh, sanitizer to uh, really clean our hands if we don't have soap and water. Then uh, the other one is to cover your cough. Cover your cough. Use the face mask. Very important for me not to infect you or you to infect me. If you want to cough, you cough in between your hands. It's important. You can, <laughs> you know this side we used to dance now. So it's the, it's the side that we use now to cough. Because yeah, don't cough here. Then you expect to see me on the way you are running like, you know, it's not, it's not advisable this period. So we should try and cough in a, in a hand and use um, the, the mask uh, as possible. Then if you, if you feel like you have some symptoms and all the rest, please, please do call. Call the hospital, inform the, uh, the people you are not feeling fine, you are having some symptoms so that they can take care of you as early as possible. I think you'll be, you'll be okay. Well, Mrs. Virginie, thank you so much for that elaborate explanation on the various ways through which we can prevent. Definitely, I would be coming back to you because you, you mostly dwell on sanitizing, sanitizing. Perhaps I would love that you try to demonstrate a little bit on how we can sanitize our hands. If you can, even if you can lay hands on a face mask, maybe the surgical face mask, it, demonstration will be good. Because I believe that sometimes when you teach and demonstrate, the students can actually understand more better. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I will be coming back to you. I will move on to our man of God, uh, Pastor Fred, who has a deep understanding, sound knowledge of the Bible. And I, I, I'm not saying that COVID-19 is coming, it's a disease that is mentioned in the Bible. <laughs> but then, a man of God, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Bible and this coronavirus, is there anything related to what God or to what happened to the children of God in the Bible time? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is, is a nice question because today fear is gripping the heart of people. 
Uh, people are saying all over the place, this is God's punishment. Um, this is God's uh, way of punishing the earth. This is a sign of the end time. This is that, this is this, this is that. Uh, but what we have to understand in, is that the world that we live in today have seen so many, so many pandemics before now. There has been lots and lots of pandemic. I wouldn't have time uh, to get all into it. If you look at even between the 2005 and 2012, we had the HIV virus outbreak that claimed over 36 million people. That was a plague and a pandemic in the earth then. If you look at the 1968 also, we experienced the flu pandemic in the earth then. Almost a million people perished. Those were pandemics. If you look between 1956 and 1958, there were also the Asian influenza that killed almost 2.7 million people in the earth that we live in. Then you go over again, there was a flu pandemic that happened in 1918 called the Spanish flu. That claimed between 20 to 50 million people with a pandemic in the earth. If you go even further down between 1910 and 1911, we have also the sixth cholera pandemic. Almost 800 plus thousand people died. Are we talking about the 18, 1889 to 1890? We had almost the flu pandemic also. Almost a million people died. If you go even further down, 1852, 1860, we had almost the third cholera virus. You go down, the Black Death, which was the worst the earth has seen. The earth saw the Black Death between the 1346 and 1353. Killed 75 to 200 million people. It is believed, historians believe that, that half of the earth died. Now we go back to the scriptures. Is our God is not uh, God is not a wicked God that that He wants to punish His people by bringing pandemic on the people. No, we know that the earth, the the Bible predicted that in the last days plagues are going to rise up, pestilence are going to rise up. You look in the book of Matthew; it's written there. We have in the book of Matthew chapter number twenty-four. The Bible says in the last days it says that the pestilence, plagues, famine is going to come. But the Bible mentions pestilence. Coronavirus is nothing close to a pestilence yet. Coronavirus is nothing close to a pestilence. In the scriptures also, we've seen that people have endured plague in the scriptures. If you look in the scriptures, we see in the book of, in the book of Numbers, I believe, it is in the book of uh, 2 Samuel, chapter number 24, David went and counted Israel against God, and God sent a pestilence, and almost 75,000 people died in one day. God said, I'm going to send you a pestilence. 75,000 people died in one day also. Look in the book of Numbers. Also, Numbers 21, uh, we understand that the children of Israel disobeyed God and God sent the serpent. And the Bible says many men perished on that day. So we've seen a few. We've seen a few of these things that happened out of men disobeying God. And then the consequence of their disobedience it came in form of pe uh, pestilence and plagues. But the heart of men is failing today because we think it's the end time. Is it the end time? Is it not the end time? It's hard to say. You know, because we look at uh, uh, revelations and prophecies, uh, some of these things happening are looking like they're fulfilling scriptures. But what can we do? We can only leave it to God because God is the one that knows it all. The Bible says the hour and the time no one knows about God. But we... As Christians have got to keep our hands clean, keep our hearts glued to God. This is time more than ever before for us to seek God, whether it is the end time or not. That is my take on it. Whether it is the end time or not, it is the time to seek God more than ever before. Whether it's the end time, whether it's not the end time, but I know for a fact that it's a time for us as Christians to do a turnaround and seek God like never before. If it is the end time, okay. If it's not the end time, also okay. Praise God. I don't want people to get afraid and feel like the world is ended. Mm. One thing what anybody would know, do that will help the person is for you to repent, thinking it's the end time. And then it happens that it's not the end time, you backslide. No, repent because you love God. Beautiful. Man Praise of God, God, I would be getting back to you in a, in a short while. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining in, this is Early Morning Reflection with Lawrence Billy Graham of the Greater Light of God Church. And this morning's program, it's talking about uh, COVID-19. Uh, we have great me, uh, men and women in studio this morning giving us an enlightenment of what COVID-19 is all about, how it can be prevented, and what the Bible says about pandemics and plagues in the, in, in, in the, in the days of old. And we've had great analogies, especially the man of God who has given us uh, a history of the various pandemics that have happened in the world. Uh, Dr. Okere, uh, uh, please let me come back to you. 
Now, we, you, you have just defined and, and explained to us what the COVID-19 is all about. And there is this particular point uh, which I really want us to talk on or you to talk on about staying at home. What is actually the essence of this staying at home? So the, 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 primary, um, the primary reason for staying at home, like our beloved sister mentioned previously, is to limit the exposure to potential sources of infection or cross-contamination. So we stay at home, um, we basically are looking, if we are not infected, to stay with, so if we, it serves two, purpose, two purposes. One is, if we're infected, then the symptoms will show up within the time that we are staying at home. And in which case, like a sister mentioned previously, then we contact the medical uh, personnel. So if we're not infected, then we stay at home, we reduce um, the possibility of infecting others or we getting infected. So those two purposes, if we're infected, then the symptoms are likely to show up, in which case we can go for hospitalization. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention, I just need to add there is the symptoms. So there are two possibilities. One can show the symptoms and then can be asymptomatic. Uh, and some, there are reports that, you know, people who have had well, the, the two primary indices of the symptoms are dry cough, dry, uh, persistent, itchy cough. And that's believed to be when the, the virus gets, um, you know, around the upper end of the respiratory tract. Wow. And so the if, other I, is, if I understood you so well, sorry for cutting you short, if I understood you so well, the essence of us staying at home is to actually reduce the rapid spread because rapid we, do understand, we do understand that the virus itself is airborne. From statistics, yes. it shows that the virus can last in the air for three hours. During these three hours, people can easily contract by breathing it in. Exactly. Beautiful. And then, so we reduce the infection. And the other point I mentioned is also pretty important because if within the time of staying indoors, the symptoms have the opportunity to show or to manifest if one is infected, one's been exposed prior to this period, in which case, it then uh, one can reach out to the uh, uh, medical um, medical services in and and then it will serve also the fact that that person is that, that in that case the inf infection is contained because you have one person who's showing symptoms that can be taken directly to receive medical attention without having to infect others if the if that person was walking around. Oh. But of course, the, the other point you mentioned, if you don't have it, well, it keeps you away from it. Thank you so much, Doctor, for the wonderful and explanation. Uh, I will be moving to, to Mrs. Jeannie Virginie. Uh, sister, you actually spoke about the virus prevention, how this virus can be prevented. Do you have any idea on how these sanitizers can be applied? That's simple. It's very simple. It's like applying your cream on your hands every day. It's very simple. Normal things, take your, your sanitizer, you apply it on your hands. It's very simple. It's the same thing with your cream on every day you apply. You try to rub it as much as possible. I said we take our time when we are doing such things. We take our time now. It's very important because we have the time. Where are we going? You are going nowhere. You are indoors. So you take your time when you go out, when you come back, or when you touch something you are suspecting, take your time, you clean your hands. If you don't have soap or clean water, you use your sanitizer, you clean your hands, you can use it for 20 seconds. So it depends on uh, which uh, or who you have touched or what you have touched. So uh, make sure you take your time at least, at least minimum 20 seconds to clean your hands and use your sanitizer also to clean your hands. It's very important. Sometimes I even go up to here, to my, and so it depends on what I've touched. So really guys, it depends on anyone and what you have touched and uh, who did you meet around and all the rest. So it's very, very important for us to use our sanitizer, to use water and soap to clean our hands today in order for us to prevent um, against this COVID-19. 
Thank you very much for that wonderful explanation. Of course, we do know that this virus can also be contracted through touching. So it actually sanitizing your hands right up to this level is also very important because you don't know what you might have touched in course of interacting. Um, a man of God, I will definitely come back to uh, Pastor Fred. Uh, Pastor Fred, uh, how are we actually helping to curb the spread of this virus during this time? Are your church services holding? Or how are people, how are you able to manage this stay home uh, ordered by the World Health Organization? Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, first of all, churches, um, as per the directives of uh, the authorities of a country that we are in, and I believe that applies to uh, people watching from all over the world, I believe, you know, people wherever they are, there's been directive from the governments to stay at home and people are adhering to that. So large gathering of crowd is prohibited. And that involves churches and mosques and parties and weddings and every other occasion that will, you know, uh, involve people congregating in one place. And to adhere to that, we have stopped all churches, all church gatherings till further notice. All activities have been moved online. So everybody connects online on Sundays, Sundays 10.30. Uh, till 12.30, we are online doing our normal uh, Sunday services. On Wednesday also, our Bible studies are going on live from 6.30 p.m. And then every other day also, every, every other day, maybe Mondays or uh, Thursdays like that, we uh, sit together also and discuss and uh, encourage our souls, encourage our hearts. And people are encouraged in this time. Like people will say, this is the time to, uh, to seek God, to come close to God, to pray. Because you are at home. You can study your Bible. You can, you know, uh, pray with your friends and your family and your loved ones, intercede for nations. In fact, it is a bad time to sow a seed of interceding for nations. Pray for those who have not gotten it. Pray for those who have gotten it, those who are sick in the hospital, that they might recover. In so doing, you are praying for yourself. In so doing, you are sowing seed for yourself. It's not all the time you're heaping prayer upon yourself, but you can pray for someone else. You know, <clears throat> like me and my family, when we heard that Boris Johnson is, uh, has, uh, has been infected, we spent time praying for him. And I was so lucky today to read on the news that he's been released from the hospital. I was so glad because I believe that Jehovah in heaven had our cry. I don't know Boris Johnson. He doesn't know me. Uh, but I seen him in the TV that he's the Prime Minister of UK. But we went on our knees praying for him. And I thank God that God had our cry when he went in intensive care. God has had our cry. And he's well. He's, you know, he's been released and back to, to, to number 10 down in the street. So we as Christians are encouraged to sow seed of prayer to others. So we seed of prayer to nations. Spain, Italy, those who are hit hard. United States is suffering it now. UK is coming up with it now. Even the nations where we live. The Bible said in Psalm 19 verse 10, it says, no evil shall come near you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Your dwelling is not only your house. Your dwelling involves your country. Your dwelling involves your city. No plague shall come near your dwelling. If you refuse to defend your city, who will defend your city? The Bible says, if the Lord watches not over the city, the watchman, they work in vain. And the Lord uses us to watch over the city. God will not come down from heaven to watch. He uses us. He watches through us. And then how do we watch over the city? To stand guard and make sure that plague and infirmities do not come into our city. And I believe that the reason why the plague is being curtailed the way that it is in the United Arab Emirates and some places in the world is because some good men stand guard and pray. Some people are praying. If good men do nothing, evil will prevail. And evil is going down because good men are crying. Good men are fighting. We don't fight. The Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. COVID-19 is a stronghold, and we are pulling it down. Why? Because we have a weapon of warfare, and that is the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians 1.26, it says his name is above principalities, above powers, above dominion, above every name that is named in this world and in the world to come. So we have that name to fight. We are standing guard to fight. Praise okay. God. Thank you so much, Pastor, for that wonderful explanation. And uh, dear televiewers, if you are just joining in, this is Early Morning Reflection with Lawrence Billy Graham from the Greater Light of God Church here in the United Arab Emirates. And we have wonderful men and women in the studio who are actually exposing to us what COVID-19 is. Uh, before we move on, uh, Dr. Chuma and uh, Pastor Fred, you will definitely give one word of advice before we sign out for the service to begin. I would like to inform televiewers that there is this course that is gradually going on. This is a certificate that has, that has just been awarded to me. I will encourage each and everyone to go do this course. It's on COVID-19. I'm going to read what has been written on it. Certificate of Completion, the Mohammed bin Rashid University of Medicine and Health 
Sciences hereby certifies that Lawrence Billy Graham's Num4 has successfully completed the following course, let's break the chain of COVID-19 infection as part of the MBRU Community Immunity Ambassador Program. With this, dear televiewers, you would get more information about COVID-19 and you would certainly be an ambassador to this, uh, against this virus, to fight against the spread of this virus. You can beautifully do this course from the comfort of your home without going out. Keep yourselves busy with prayers. Keep yourselves busy with this course. Thank you so much. Uh, one more word from Dr. Chuba before we sign out. Dr. Chuba and Pastor Fred, you give us one, just one word of advice before we sign out for the service to begin. <clears throat> Okay, so thank you. Um, one word of advice, stay home. Just one word, stay home. If you don't have to be out, like on um, special assignment or special duties, just stay home. Um, you know, there's, there's, that, there's been this uh, misinformation that it's predominantly for the elderly. No, COVID-19 can affect the youth also. Um, so if you don't have to be out, if there's no reason for you to be outside, please stay home. Thank you, doctor. And Thank stay you. connected. And stay connected <laughs> online. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Pastor you. Fred. Praise God. Um, there is one common mistake that people have been making. And this common mistake is that uh, people, yes, are doing well when they go out, they're wearing the mask and they're wearing their, their hand gloves. But this is a common mistake that a man will take a mask and then he wears it from morning till night and then takes a hand glove, wears it in the morning, goes outside and then touches everything and then come back home in the evening with the same uh, uh, hand glove. You have defeated the purpose of protecting yourself because you are doing what they call co cross-contamination. You go into a grocery store, you touch things with the same glove. You go into your car, you touch the same glove in your car. You touch your phone, you touch your pocket, you touch your face and you touch your door handles before you remove the glove. You have contaminated all those things, supposing that the, the, the virus is in your glove, and you walk into your car with the same glove. You've contaminated your car. Even when you remove your glove, you will find that you are touching the same car with your bare hands, thereby putting the virus you are protecting yourself from when you wore the glove in your hand also. So what you do is, if you wear your mask and your glove, when you get into a grocery store, finish with that glove. When you get into your car, get into your home, Remove your glove carefully before you get into your home. Then sanitize your hand also. Sanitize your door handles. Do not carry the same glove and wear it all day and say, yes, I'm protecting my hand. You have con cross-contaminated yourself. That is one very big mistake people make, especially when it comes to masks. People wear this cloth mask. They go home and they wash it. And tomorrow they wear it again. What are you doing? You are con cross-contaminating yourself. By the time you wear one mask all day, you touch it. Whatever that's falling on the mask is falling on your hands and you're taking it into your cloth, into your chest, into your face. No, it's not done like that. Wear one mask when you get to a place and come back, throw it away carefully, remove your gloves so that you don't cross contaminate yourself. And like right. doctor said, stay home if you can. Yeah. Stay home. Stay home and stay connected to God. Stay connected with the church. And I believe this thing is going to pass. And one thing you must pray in this season, ask God one minute, please. Ask God to reposition you because whenever there is a great change, there is trouble. Trouble precedes change. In this troubled time, when it's over, there's going to be a great massive change. Ask God, position me in a place, in, in a position whereby when this is over, I will be among those that will reap the blessing of the change that will come. Millionaires, new millionaires are going to come out of this. Yes, yes. New entrepreneurs are going to come out of this. New success stories are going to be born from this when this is over. And I pray that God repositions the church, that we will be partakers of the new thing that's going to come when all this is over. God bless you. Oh, thank you so thank much, you so Pastor, much, for that wonderful word. I will just ask uh, Mrs. Virginie, uh, please, just one word, very, very brief. brief. Um, all I have to say, same thing. Stay home is very important for us. Stay home and stay connected. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was quite brief enough. Uh, dear televiewers, thank you so much for staying tuned. This has been Early Morning Reflection with Lawrence Billy Graham from the Greater Light of God Church. And present in the studio have been Dr. Chuma, Pastor Fred, and Mrs. Virginie. 
These have been great men and women who have actually exposed everything about COVID-19. The little advice or the a summary from their advices have been stay home. On to another edition, dear televiewers. We wish you a wonderful stay during this lockdown. Above all, please uphold prayers, stay home, and participate in our live services. Now we are moving on to our live stream program for today, Friday. Stay tuned to the end of the service. God bless you. Have a wonderful service.